Hello, we're going to be taking a look at the TPOS extension. This was the first extension to be um, contributed to LMBits by Tal three, four years ago. I can't even remember. Um, and uh, since then, it's evolved quite a lot, which is why I'm making this updated video for the extension. If we pop over to the repo, we can start, see we've got some great contributors to the extension. This lives on LMBits organization uh, backslash TPOS. There's info on all the different functions of the extension, but essentially it's a software point of sale which you can use to accept payments in your cafe bar or wherever you're accepting payments for products or services. Um, you can run it on your computer, you can run it on your phone, you can run it on one of these cool little Android point of sale devices. Um, these are readily available on AliExpress, Alibaba, Amazon. This particular one was given to me by the great Bitcoin prior project. Uh, in the Bitcoin Beach Brazil, a great project, please check it out. They also sell these points of sale, so it's a nice way for you to contribute to their great project onboarding um, uh, their communities in Brazil there. We do sell it in the LM Bits shop. Um, I think currently we're actually out of stock, so hopefully by the time you see this video we'll be in stock, but as you can see the point of sale looks really nice on, on, the, uh, on the Android device there. Um, and this is NFC enabled, so you can use the bolt card with this and, and do tap and pay um, using the point of sale as well. So let's open up the extension and then take a look at all of its different features. Um, I'm just going to start by making a very simple point of sale. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm going to select a wallet, which is where the funds are going to go. And then I'm going to pick a currency. So you can, of course, denominate in SATs. I'm going to denominate in GBP just because the people working in my cafe uh, don't, aren't going to be able to keep up with the volatility of Bitcoin when it comes to pricing the products in my cafe. So I'm just going to click on Create TPOS. Now, when I click on this little link here, it will open up the point of sale. And this is the software point of sale. You can use it in your browser. Um, but a great feature of the point of sale is if we click on this little share button here, we get a QR code. Now, if I scan that QR code just with a regular normal QR code scanner, and then open the link. That will open the point of sale in my phone. So when I onboard merchants to accept Bitcoin payments using the TPOS extension, they usually end up printing out that QR code, sticking it in the till and just saying to everyone who works there, if someone wants to come in and pay in Bitcoin, scan this QR code, it'll open the point of sale on your own phone and you can accept a Bitcoin payment. This is completely, the, this public page here is completely air gapped from the wallet which is funding it. So there's no way of um, being able to take any funds or get um, in too much information from the wallet. So we'll make a payment to the POS. There's my wallet, there's my wallet. As you can see here, it says NFC not supported. So if, I was, if I'd opened this on a device and browser that supports NFC, Chrome on a, a mobile phone, for example, then NFC would be enabled and you could do a tap and pay with that bolt card. But I'm going to do it the good old fashioned way, scanning that QR code there. So I'm going to make the payment. Payment goes through um, and we get a tick. Now, as I said, this extension has evolved using from all the great real world, real world feedback from our users. Thanks a lot for that, by the way. Um, and uh, little things like this, this tick. It lingers on the page until you click on the page or until you press on the screen of the device. And that's from people accepting Bitcoin payments in busy bars, looking away for a second. The tick used to just sort of linger for three seconds and go away. They'd look away, they'd look back. The tick's gone. They don't know if the payment's gone through. Um, so something you can get from this public page is just the last five transactions to the wallet, just as a way, again, of being able to, if you need to, an extra verification for a payment going through. So that's the most basic functionality of the extension. Let's look at the next feature. So we're going to enable tips. We can select a specific tip wallet for this, which is where our tips are going to go. We have another extension called Scrub. And in Scrub, you can give it an LN address and then say, well, every time funds go to a certain wallet, push to that LN address. So someone working in your wherever could give you an LN address. You can put it in Scrub and then it could scrub the funds from that LN Bits wallet to that LN address. This is a really powerful part of LN Bits is, is when you mix and marry up all these different extensions and they work so well together. So anyway, I've selected the tip wallet. I'm gonna 
enter in some default values, 5, 10, and 20 percent. Click update TPOS, I'm going to update the page here. So now, when I enter an amount, press OK. Do I want to leave a tip? Yes, I do. I'm going to leave a 20% tip, please. And we can see there it's added on a nine, nine sats there as a tip. If I pay that. Okay, cool. Um, and if I go back to the wallet, we've got a bunch of transactions here from when I was uh, playing around with this earlier. But we can see the last couple of transactions was for the amount I paid. And then that included the tip. And then that tip was deducted from this wallet and was pushed to the tip wallet. So you have a record of the tips going out there. You can see the, the nine sats going in there. Um, what should we take a look at next? Ooh. So when I was in El Salvador and I was paying for stuff in Bitcoin, I ran out of Bitcoin and I wanted to be able to get more sats. And I thought, well, there's all these merchants accumulating Bitcoin. They should have the option to be able to sell the sats back to me. So I was very keen on adding this little feature, which is an ATM feature. Um, so we can have a pin, and then when the merchant enters the pin, they can create an LNUL withdraw and sell sats to their customers for a premium. So I'm going to make a 10% premium on that sale. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to put on a 20% premium there. We have some security features, such as you can limit the amount of sats which can be sold in a day. I'm going to limit that to a million sats and uh, the time between withdrawals as well. So this POS can only do a withdrawal every 10 minutes. It's just another little security feature there. I'm going to update the point of sale. And now when I refresh, I should get an ATM button. There we are. So if I click on that, I can enter a pin. Um, and I get a little red button here saying exit ATM mode. So in ATM mode, if I input an amount and then press OK, this has generated an LNUL withdraw, which I can scan. And then click receive. Hope I've got enough uh, sats in the wallet to cover it. I have, thank goodness. And there we are, I've received the, the pounds worth of Bitcoin. So the merchant has sold a pounds worth of Bitcoin to the customer. I feel like all Bitcoin points of sale should have the ability as an option to do over-the-counter selling of Bitcoin. Right. Um, what should we look at next? Okay, so we've got a, a tax setting here. Now, this is, this is interesting. Um, this applies to if you add items to the point of sale. So that's actually what we're going to look at next. So this is like a you know, simple point of sale, um, but we want maybe a, a more of a, a checkout type UI where we can select different items to make it easy for the people working in our cafe. So I'm going to add coffee. And then I've got an image for my coffee. Enter a price. So I'm going to say it's 50p for a cup of coffee. Categories, drinks, uh, tax. And we're going to add a, I know I'm going to add a tax. So I'm going to add a 10% tax. So you can set the overall tax on the point of sale for all the different items, or you can do granular changing of the tax. I'm just going to do it in a granular way. Next thing I'm going to add is Welsh cakes, because you need to have a cake with your cup of coffee. Yep. Pop in the URL and then charge 50p for that as well. Cakes and also a 10% tax, create item. So now when I refresh my point of sale, there we go. Um, and uh, at checkout or you know, when you're buying your cup of coffee, person working in your cafe can just press you know, the buttons, makes it a little bit easier for them. Um, we can filter this by categories, which we added before. We, can also, we also have a filter thing here where we can type in cakes or whatever. Um, I'm going to remove a couple of these because I don't think I've got enough money in my wallet. So we'll have a look. Um, let's see. How much does that work out if I put a 5% tip on there as well? No, I haven't got enough. Oh, I'm only going to be able to buy a cup of coffee. That is sad. But I'll add a 10% tip. There we go. 
Okay. Okay. There we are, get the tick. You can go back to the other version of the POS just by clicking that button right there. Um, oh, and another feature which I didn't mention is in the normal simple point of sale, if you enter an amount, you can press plus and then you can calculate a total as well um, if you want to. No tip. There we go. Let's go take a look at those transactions in our LM Bits wallet, shall I? Ba -ba -ba -bum. I want to look at this one here. Um, so as you can see in the transaction, we've got these we've got these tags here for accounting. Uh, worth mentioning as well that one of the things you can do in an LM Bits wallet is export to CSV. So for the merchant, they can export the CSV and bring it into their QuickBooks or whatever they use for their accountancy. Um, but we also have this JSON. Uh, so what we can do with this JSON is we can actually have a device which listens to the wallet, waits for the JSON of uh, waits for a payment to go through, and then we'll print out print out a receipt. Uh, we have a thermal printer project which we sell in our shop as well. Um, and this connects over Wi-Fi, connects to the wallet, and then there's a web socket, and it will every time you you know someone buys something from you or print out a receipt. Useful for say you know app point of sale at the counter when you're buying your cup of coffee. You can also put one of these things in the back. So add all, as orders come in, the kitchen know what they need to be cooking. Um, so yeah, uh, great project. The thermal printer um, project for TPOS. This was from BC Black Coffee, who uh, runs their shop, the Alan Bits shop. So congratulations for him for all the great work. And I think that is it. Uh, check it out, run Alan Bits, play around with the point of sale. Oh, one more thing I do actually want to show you because when I'm onboarding people, they often end up using my LM Bits install and I really want to limit their exposure. So one of my favorite extensions is what my favorite extensions are, Scrub, if they want to accumulate Bitcoin in SATs uh, on Lightning Network. But I tend to find that people want to, who own a business, they want to accumulate Bitcoin by selling stuff and then have it collect and gather on their hardware device on chain where they can put it in cold storage. So we have a great extension called Bolts, which we have a video for on LM Bits. So please go check that out. But I just want to show you this because I think marrying TPOS and Bolts together as extensions is, is very powerful. In Bolts, we have an auto LN to on chain feature. So for those who don't know, Bolts is uh, a way of doing trustless atomic swaps between Lightning, on-chain, Liquid. But in auto LN to on-chain, we can select a wallet and then we can say, when this wallet gets to, I don't know, 500,000 sats, loop out to this on-chain address. And it'll just keep an eye on the wallet. As soon as it gets to 500,000 sats, it'll loop out to that on-chain address. So people who are using, merchants who are using my LN bits installed to accept payments, it all concatenates together every half a million sats. It will loop out and then just put it, send it to an on-chain address and it's up to them where they generate that on-chain address from a hardware wallet or wherever they're storing their on-chain funds. But I tend to find that's a very popular combination of extensions um, in LM bits for merchants. Anyway, thanks very much for watching um, and uh, yeah, enjoy playing around with TPOS. Cheers.